this vehicle is completely unsafe to drive, and we're going to show you some of the things that we've found. Um, but how your vehicle is repaired matters to you. Hey everybody, welcome back to the airing of grievances with Robert Grieve. I'm Eric Raymer. Super happy to have you here. If this is your first time here, welcome. If this is your 10th time here, thank you. We're super grateful for each and every one of you. Today we're on the shop floor here at Nylands Collision Center and we're going to run through a case study of what not to do. This is a post repair inspection and Robert is going to walk us through with one of our lead technicians on how we do what we do when somebody brings a car to us after it's been repaired and I use that word lightly by another shop. Happy Saturday everybody and uh, today we're gonna do uh, a little presentation on a repair that has already been performed and uh, there's lots to talk about with this. Most importantly how your car is repaired matters. It matters to you it matters to your passengers that are in the vehicle. Uh, in this particular case, uh, mom and her two kids that typically drive this vehicle, in this vehicle. This vehicle is completely unsafe to drive, and we're gonna show you some of the things that we've found. Um, but how your vehicle is repaired matters to you and your passengers, uh, and even your wallet when it comes to the value of your vehicle. Uh, but we're going to get into that in a different segment. That's that's coming up soon. That's going to be a good one. Right now, uh, to help me go through, you know, kind of what's going on on this Honda Pilot, uh, I'm going to bring in Kevin West, who's our lead tech here. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Good. Okay. So Kevin is Lexus certified, and he's gone to the schools and done all the online training, and he is very, very well versed in how to repair cars. Uh, properly. No, this is not a Lexus. But if you go through the school and become certified in pretty much any manufacturer's vehicles, you have a, a well-rounded uh, technical knowledge and you know where to go find the specific procedures that you need to repair the vehicle properly. So even though this is a Honda and the procedures will be a little bit different than a Lexus, in concept, they're the same, and the instructions and how they want it repaired are, are found in similar places. So we go to the Honda site, and we download and pay for the subscription, get the appropriate procedures for what's going to need to uh, be repaired or replaced, and then uh, we take it from there. That is not common in the industry today, unfortunately, uh, and certainly was not done during this repair. Uh, if, if, it, if they were downloaded, they weren't followed. And we can show that clearly. It's, there wasn't even an attempt. So, uh, take us through some of the things that struck you right out, right, out, right out of the box once we got the bumper cover off the vehicle. So I'm gonna let you just kind of walk around. Uh, so first thing, just the, uh, a lot of grind marks through the paint unground welds uh, very, very very poor paint work is what stands out in the beginning so you start digging deeper and you really start looking and where the structure of this vehicle is you can see terrible welds um, All right, let's back up a little bit. And we're gonna talk about this structure requires a certain amount of welds. 
in very specific places with very specific types of welds. Right. So it, it could be a squeeze type resistance weld, it could be uh, a mag weld, a uh, plug weld. Uh, there's no bronze welds not on the, yes. in the front, but there are if we were fixing a different part of the car. Yes. Um, but you can talk about the fact that it wasn't welded properly, there aren't enough welds, there's welds where they don't belong, and they're not the correct, correct welds. Yes. Also, we're not sure, because we weren't there when this was repaired, did they use the Honda wire in, in the welding? Did they use the appropriate gas for the welder? You know, there's certain things that, but regardless of all that, it's welded in the wrong place. Is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> okay. So it doesn't really matter anything about the welds anymore when you weld it in the wrong place to begin with. It's in the wrong place to begin with. Okay. Uh, the welds now become almost secondary. But still, there's not enough welds on this, and they're not the correct welds. And right. should this take another front impact, it's not going to operate as designed by Honda. It will not. Okay. Some of the important things are we know it's not welded in the right place because we put this up on the frame machine and measured the vehicle. Yes. That would be these measurements over here, right? those measurements. And anything in red is out of spec. Correct. So both of these frame rails are not within spec. Correct. Okay. So this radiator support is welded to the frame rails, correct? Correct. So if the radiator support is welded to the frame rails and the frame rails are not where they're supposed to be, how could the support be where it's supposed to be? It can't. It can't be. It can't be. So, if the if the support is welded to rails that aren't where they're supposed to be, and the support isn't where it's supposed to be, how could this distance sensor possibly be where it's supposed to be? Because it's attached to the radiator support that's not where it's supposed to be, because it's attached to rails that aren't where they're supposed to be. That's a great question. Okay. So... This is, this was written, I should say, uh, for about $16,000 worth of damage, okay? So I don't know why anybody would repair a vehicle with $16,000 worth of damage and not do measurements. I mean, it just, it, it boggles my mind how that's even possible. It's like going in to the hospital because you think you broke your arm and the doctor saying, okay, we're gonna put a cast on it. Well, aren't there a few things that should be done before we jump right to a cast? Maybe an X-ray or maybe you know, verify that we're dealing with something or you know, what's the cast supposed to do? You know, all those things. Especially when an airbag goes off. Oh, airbags went off. So here you bring up another point. One of the reasons it's so critical that this radiator support be welded in properly with the right amount of welds, the right type of welds, and in the right place is, would you come and take a, a quick peek at this right here for me? Especially the yellow part. Okay, so what we're showing you right there is on both sides of this radiator support are the airbag sensors. So if the airbag sensors are attached to something that has not been attached properly or in the right place, and is attached to something else that's bent, what is the chances that the timing for the airbags is gonna be correct in another crash? Very slim. Yeah, very it's slim. It's not gonna, it's not gonna perform as designed. And Eric, uh, maybe we can throw up that video that Honda puts out, uh, the melon video of how milliseconds count milliseconds when count. it comes to airbag deployment and somebody getting hurt or not hurt. And in this particular situation, they would get hurt. It's my opinion. Because these things, 
how could they fire properly when they're not where they're where they're intended to be? So that's in the end, this vehicle, as horrifically as it was repaired, and we haven't even gotten to what wasn't repaired that should have been repaired that was part of it. This vehicle is totally unsafe, and had it been written properly to begin with, it would have been deemed a total loss. But COVID, we're in the year of, or the time of COVID, many shops are slow, and instead of totaling this vehicle, which is what it should have happened, this vehicle was repaired. So the insurance company saved money, the body shop made money, and the consumer got screwed. So one of the other things we're gonna do is uh, show you a quick vid of their ride home from picking up the, the vehicle. And it, it's nothing short of horrific. shouldn't have been repaired and if it was going to be repaired it should have been repaired properly for the safety of the, of, of the people inside the car would you show a couple of things that weren't even repaired that should have been repaired from this loss like the brake booster there's the anti-lock brake block there's which the, has got electronics in it there's quite a few plastic parts on the front of this that needed to be replaced that got neglected yeah, so not only wasn't it repaired properly, it wasn't repaired thoroughly either. No. No, and I, I find it hard to believe that you can miss something. I mean, you're right here putting it, this piece in. Yeah, hard, keep in mind, all this, this stuff is brand new, so it was wide open. Wide open, yes. Uh, and they would have had to have disconnected it to even put these pieces in, so they would it. have seen it. They would have seen it, yes. Let's see how closely Eric can zoom in, because I want to show you, this is broken, this is how it's broken. Try to come from the angle, I want to show the electronics that are inside of it. Look at all those pins, that's, that's all the electronics that are controlling your anti-lock brake system. That, with that cover cracked like that, water's going to get in there, and we know what happens when water starts touching connections that aren't supposed to be, you know, touched. Anything can go on. Uh, we got a front distance sensor that has a job to do to tell the computer something. It's not getting good information because it's not in the right place. We have an alternator back here that all the wires to the alternator, uh, the plastic covering, that's all broken, letting water into the uh, alternator, which again is tracked by the computer system. It's going to be sending bad information, bad information, and. In the end, this is a horrible repair. It should have never been repaired. And we're not in the business of doing post repair inspections, but once again, these people found us and you know, we took it in and, and said, yeah, we'll take a peek at it and see, make sure that you're safe. Because the hard thing is if you arrive on our lot and you have a question about the safety of your vehicle, I, I feel morally obligated to get involved and, and make sure that you're safe, especially if you have a question of whether you're safe. And, you know, after you see the, the little video that they took on the way home, you know, keep in mind this car had an alignment, or at least there's an alignment on the paperwork. Part of doing an alignment is doing a road test to make sure that the the alignment is working properly. By the way, I'm not sure how you can get an alignment on this vehicle with bent frame rails that the suspension is attached to. Uh, you know, but a lot of things went wrong here, and the guest is the one that's that's getting the brunt of it. And you know, there's a lot that we go through to make sure the cars are repaired properly. I wished a lot of more people would join us in doing it this way. So I'll leave you with 
how your vehicle is repaired matters. It truly matters to your safety and the safety of the cars around you. If something were to go wrong and this car veer off into another lane because a distance sensor is, is sending you down a different road or getting bad information, it's, it's just not worth it. Be very, very choosy where you take your vehicle. Uh, and uh, if you ever have any questions, we're here to help. Again, that's it for this Saturday morning. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for being here with me. Yep. And uh, happy Saturday. All right, guys, there you have it. That is our airing of grievances for today. But I want to invite you, if you haven't yet, click the subscribe button. Click the uh, notification bell so that people know that uh, when we upload new content, you can share it with others. And that's the big thing right there. Share this content. This is not for other body shops. This is for you. The person who drives to work every single day, the person who puts their family in their cars. And you want to make sure that if you go to a shop that something is done correctly. Please do us, do us a favor, click the like button, share this out with your friends and family on the social media platforms, and we'll see you again.